drink up, witches. Yeah, witches. All right. We're back. We are here for episode four. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So. That's so exciting. Yeah, I have so much I want to talk yeah, to you well about, you... I'll let you start. Okay, I'll start. Because I'm going to talk, talk the whole episode. Okay, so. so a couple of things I wanted to start. So episodes one and two are out right now. There are a couple Woo! of corrections. Um, yes. But overall, we've got great feedback. I so appreciate people who messaged us. So we're like, yay. Mm-hmm. So... I know, um, me too. Very exciting. The I just cracked up. When you get in the mode of going and you start tripping yeah. over your words, it makes me laugh. So I know. At one point so funny. I said something like, um, she was a single mother. She was also a mother <laughs> of children. And <laughs> so dumb and then you had a couple right (laughs) yeah oh my gosh like one I said um like the four elements like the four signs sign elements I said three and I said I think I just said like water fire and earth I forgot to say air well I said wind and then we were like, yeah, you we were said like, no, wind. It's not wind. No, it's not wind. <laughs> I know. And then you're like, wait, I think there's three. I'm like, are there three? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, just don't come. So to us there for are facts. four. There are four. Yeah, we never said that we are experts. We just enjoy the shit. Yeah. So, um, yeah. other news. <laughs> mm. Okay, what the hell is going on with? Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson. Okay, I'm so like, glad. She- I'm so glad you're bringing this up. I saw the funniest meme, and it was like, um, Kim felt felt left out with the punk rock scene, so she hopped on a roller coaster and made a, a rock <laughs> sign. Right and right. Ooh, I everyone, did you see that? Everyone saying they love the Jasmine and Aladdin SNL scene and. I thought her episode was great, but I thought that scene yeah. was the cringiest one. Oh I my god! Not like I know it was terrible. I didn't like that one at all. I don't know. I'm just not a big fan. Well, and I'm just so confused because, like, Kim K is beautiful. Like, what the hell would she ever see in Pete Davidson? Like, I'm sorry okay. if people find him but... attractive, but does he have a big dick? Like. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on there? Well, <laughs> looking at it this way, she went from mm-hmm. someone like Kanye, who is like white walls, white floor, all black mask. I don't know. It's just this weird, like, yeah, very plain but creepy person. And then now she's like dating a comedian and he's goofy and hasn't showered in a week and <laughs> looks like it, too. I don't, know. I don't understand. Yeah. I don't get it either. Also, um, so another thing that I do want to talk about, though, just kind of like throwing this out there. Um, I ended up like cutting my nails super short. So they're like little baby baby nails. nails. But um, the reason why I did that is I think I'm going to get into boxing. Like workout, like kickboxing. (laughs) It's like, what's boxing? (laughs) Yeah, like I was like, thinking like crafting. Workout. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm with no, you. No. And so I want to do it for a workout, but I also like want to do it just like self-defense type thing, like just for protection. So I'm like, well, I have these long nails, probably don't want to box with long nails. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought this up because I actually got into a boxing fight and busted <laughs> one of my nails so. oh my gosh Point with proven. an actual box yes <laughs> yes actually that's not a joke i was taking out christmas decorations and i ripped my nail off so the box ow one. ow <laughs> well that's it that sounds painful i i know don't have no desire to get hit um, no i don't want to get hit you don't get hit so you're just in, gonna like, box it like a bag or a person like you train like you're training like a boxer so you're but gonna they don't hit, hit you yeah that's they'll hold up like the things and you're like hitting them and it's pretty cool no i'm out on that well 
I guess if we ever need to get into a fight, I'll fight. And I'll just scratch your eyes out. <laughs> right, with your claws. <laughs> no, I'm a, a hide the key in the finger person. Yeah. So I always have an escape route planned. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right, what other news? Hmm. Oh, our skincare. Oh, yeah, skincare. And then I was going to tell the oh story my of my forehead. Okay, we'll talk about your forehead first <laughs> okay. because it will go into the, the skincare. skincare. Okay, so oh uh, several people were like, yes, please <laughs> tell us what happened on Halloween with your forehead. So it's not exciting, but it was horribly embarrassing. <laughs> Um, okay, so we went to this club, and you guys saw the picture where we're by the neon I love you sign. Well, there were yeah. like a, there was like an L-shaped bench that you had to stand on to get to the next ledge to sit there, and everyone does this. This is not like yeah. we were something new scaling mm -hmm. a wall. I mean, it, right. <laughs> so Alexa goes first and stands on. Like, this part of the L-shaped couch. I'm trying to give a visual here. For people just listening, if you make an L with your finger, it's the part where the two fingers meet. The crease. The crease. And she stands on and like a seesaw. <laughs> like a seesaw with a ton of bricks on the other side of it. That thing flew. I was standing in the perfect position for that thing to pop up swing around and hit me in the freaking head so yeah. this if you're watching right now is what it looks like with makeup on it still mm -hmm. hurts in fact i had a headache before we recorded and i'm like ugh, it just throbs mm. it's got a heartbeat yeah i'm gonna name it um working on legally adopting it it's, it was it was so embarrassing and then the freaking security guard yeah. runs up and all he has to say was i tried to stop you guys before uh before that happened and i'm thinking how about this what? how about if this this clearly occurs a lot uh right <laughs> how about we nail the bench down yeah like, what do you what does that open it? for storage like come on yeah but there was nothing in there because i stepped in the fucking middle yeah. of it so <laughs> It was awful. Um, There's definitely cause for a lawsuit, but I'm just too lazy. Yeah. And the only picture I got of it when it happened, I was like laughing and clearly intoxicated. So I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> what am I going to do? Send this in? And they're going to be like, well, we know exactly what happened here. <laughs> and it wasn't like that. It... No, no. So horribly embarrassing. I mm -hmm. definitely shed a tear. I was humiliated yeah. and also in a lot of pain no yeah you were in a lot of pain <laughs> so especially like the next day it sucked yeah alexa was like i can see it growing <laughs> i can see it getting bigger I'm like cadence put it away <laughs> <laughs> tie that thing down <laughs> tie it down so yeah well speaking of skin and skincare we have the most exciting new Ever. <laughs> we do. We do. We are sponsored by Color Up. <laughs> by Color Up uh, CBD. They are a company out of Colorado. They grow their own CBD and they create skincare. So we are starting to use the skincare. Um, I cannot wait to see the effects of it. So here in like 30 days, we'll give you all an update, but yes. um, it's supposed to be amazing. Like friends of ours use it and they absolutely love it. So um, if you all are interested, check them out on Instagram. It's at ColorUpCBD on Instagram and their website is ColorUpCo. Dot com. Um, and if you are interested and you want to buy, you can use Sinister 20 for 20% off your order. I can't even believe this is happening. When we found out about this, we were, well, when we found out, we hadn't even released our first episode yet. They had just right. seen everything that we were posting. They were excited. Um, they like the idea of what we're doing. And so here we are four episodes in and we've got a sponsor mm -hmm. and I'm so freaking excited. And yeah. it's 
So one of the things <clears throat> that we're getting is CBD droplets that go under your tongue. And I can say one, I'm not a medical professional. Please talk to your doctor or your therapist or whoever. But as someone who has <laughs> insane anxiety, CBD right. tongue droplets are my absolute favorite thing. I've been wanting to start <clears throat> using those again. So I'm so excited for things along right? those lines. Um, I know. I'm pumped. I am too. I'm so yeah, pumped. Yeah, and I already have like some CBD skincare and it is amazing. So I use it because I'm just like super sensitive and it's great. It's a great um, item to control like redness and blotchiness, mm -hmm. you know, on your face. And then it's also a great moisturizer additive. So yeah. I am just so excited to try the entire line. I am too. And dog treats, right? That was something else that... Yeah, they also I have... I uh... CBD skincare. It's amazing, so I use it because I'm just like super sensitive. <laughs> what? Is that <laughs> your phone? <laughs> My watch. <laughs> But, oh my god, she is always listening. Okay, speaking of always listening, I have one more what? one more news update, and this is a okay. story near and dear to my heart, but I was like, oh what? my gosh. Okay, so I what? my sister Sammy has mm -hmm. two um she has two twin one set of twins. Two twins, one set of twins. <laughs> Anyways, a set my of twins. set of twins, my nieces. Um Aww. they they are precious. They are in the baby shark phase of life. And Aww. so she got them these little baby shark plastic cell phones and each one, mm -hmm. like each of the buttons plays something different. And this is going to blow your mind. Okay. So what? she let them take the phones outside and it's been raining mm -hmm. for forever. Brought the phones back in when she realized they were left out and the buttons are starting to say different things. So uh -oh. obviously there's a little bit of water damage, but they'll do, they'll sing like the baby shark theme song. They'll count numbers uh, mm -hmm. for like the phone. They'll say mommy shark, daddy shark, blah, blah, blah. There's a button that's like hello and goodbye for the hang up and the answer. Mm -hmm. And now it says, mm -hmm. hello, William. not joking what? and she said cadence i am an expert in baby shark i've seen all the episodes and there's not even a character named william and it's for sure saying hello hello william, william. Button, like it's not would normally just say hello and william i mean maybe please tell me please tell me she like burned this <laughs> That's to get I rid said. of it i'm like uh girl you left that outside and something attached itself to it that is <laughs> yeah. scary <laughs> oh my god Hello, that is william. so scary yeah so that's my sinister news of the day. <laughs> sinister news of the day. Oh my god. Yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah. Um speaking of sinister, well, not really cuz it's not sinister, but something spiked. <laughs> what are you drinking? Okay. <laughs> So I took your recommendation and I found a oh. dry rosé Pinot Noir. Yes. It is Toad Hollow Vineyards out of Sonoma County. And Yum. it is so good. So I love Yum. the dry reds and I normally yes. don't do any light wines, but this yeah. is delicious. Well, I'm glad you like it. Um, I am drinking Campo Viejo. Yes. It's a Tempranillo. Mm -hmm. So it's from Spain. I love Tempranillo so much. Yes, same. And that love exact them. one, I love. Yes. I do too. So good. It's one of my favorites. And it's only like $16 a bottle or something. Dang, that's a deal. Dang, it's a steal. God, <laughs> <laughs> okay oh god well we okay so what oh i was what? gonna say are we ready to do the deal i'm ready to do the deal but what is the drinking word of the day well don't hate me i already know what you're gonna choose what go ahead no, and say, say it, it. No. no no you say it what? Say here we'll say it on a count of three ready uh -huh. one two three. Robert. Peg. <laughs> okay. 
I actually will do pig because when I got to thinking about it, I'm like, this is going to be yeah. a long story. If I do Robert, we're going to need like three bottles of wine. So we'll do pig. Oh my God. We'll be drunk in like 10 minutes. <laughs> I mean, okay. Okay. So I mean, pig, so drinking word is pig. Pig. Drinking word is pig. So um, if you are drinking and playing along, anytime you hear the word pig, take a sip. And if you're not 21, like then grab your, Drink your Pedialyte, your, Pedialyte <laughs> your Atkins shake, which are delicious. No shame to them. They are so good. Yeah, they are. Uh, and water. Water. It's water. Really All big right. into drip drops right now. So we are shh, big shh, into drip shh, drops shh. and you find them in the baby section by the Pedialyte. No way. That's where you get it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you ever need to go to like Walgreens or Walmart or whatever, it's by okay, the don't, Pedialyte, don't like tell, in the baby don't section. Don't tell people anymore. They need to sponsor us first and then we'll tell people how to buy it. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Drip Drop, if you're listening, we love you. Hit us up. <laughs> Hit us up. <laughs> All right. So uh, we got to do this before we get into it. But our disclaimer, um, our videos and podcasts are for entertainment purposes all information discussed was found on the internet. Keep in mind, we will talk all things sinister that may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. And you're going to need a viewer discretion on this episode, so... Or listener discretion. Yeah, listener discretion. All right. So we are talking about Robert... Picton, mm-hmm. also known as Willie Picton, also known as the pig farmer or the butcher. Yep. All he right. is another Scorpio born on October 24th, which is my mom's birthday, by the way. Um, I know. <laughs> Your weird. mom has a lot of <laughs> relations to serial killers. I know. I mean, she might secretly be one. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Born on October 24th, 1949 in Port Coquitlam, British Columbia, Canada. Oh, Canada. So, yep. This city is like 30 minutes outside of Vancouver. Um, So, it's Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam. Um, smaller city back in the forties and fifties, like the highest population was like 3000 people in the fifties. Um, now there's only about 60,000 people. So that tells you like, it's a smaller town, so it's not that large. Yeah. And it's known for being the city of rivers and mountains, AKA perfect area to hide a body. Rivers, mountains, got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I had to get the visual mm-hmm. with the words. Right. So, you know, it's it's a nice enough, like, little suburb of Vancouver. Um, but, again, it's a small city, so it's not too big of a suburb, right? And he, his parents were Leonard and Louise picked in. Now they come from, well, not Louise, but Leonard comes from a family of three generations of pig farmers. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, the story is all around pig farmers and you know what they always say. First off, we're you already like to... two drinks. Oh in. yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, forgot the drinking word. Numero dos. Okay. I mean, you know what they say if you ever need to get rid of a body. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. But. Go to Canada? (laughs) Feed it to a pig. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Just kidding. (laughs) Oh, man. Maybe Robert would have been a better word. Yeah, maybe. Um, So before I get into, like, his childhood, I want to talk about, you know, He is a Scorpio, and we've talked about, you know, the astrological meaning of a Scorpio and their likes and dislikes and strengths and weaknesses, but I want us to focus on controlling Mm -hmm. and caring. Okay. 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 So, a bad quality, yet a good quality, because you're going to hear a lot throughout the story how he is controlling, but he's also really caring. At the same time. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. So, 
I mean, I mean, we've kind of talked a lot about that with our with like the, the past Scorpios. people, you know. Yeah, I was yeah, re-listening they're... to episode two today. Well, re-listening. Mm-hmm. I've listened to it a million times, but <laughs> episode two, and it is right. crazy how people close to them aren't. Yeah. I mean, they're obviously victims in that they endured these people personally, but so yeah. far, none of them have been like that way towards yeah. the people they love. So, right, right. So, you know, it's just, it's so weird because they can easily like disconnect and like the whole psychological aspect of it, it, it that just like fascinates me. Yeah. You know, how just like what we said, you know, they can be controlling yet caring. But caring towards the people they love, yet controlling and violent towards the people they don't like. Right. Um, Also, just FYI, a lot of you will see, like, my neck get speckly or my chest get speckly. Yeah, I'm freaking anxious. But it's also due to alcohol. So anytime I drink, this happens. Wait, really? Just FYI. Yeah. I mean, my neck is really red, but maybe that's why. No, anytime I drink... So my dad is actually allergic to alcohol, like full on allergic. Yes. Yeah. Full on allergic to alcohol. So I don't know. I might have a slight allergy to it, but um, (laughs) But here we are, but risk it for the biscuit girlfriend. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm okay. But I do get hives from alcohol. I just have rosacea. All the time. So. (laughs) Oh, well. (laughs) Maybe you can cure that with a CBD. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Okay. So Robert Picton, he was um, convicted of only six of his murders. However, he confessed to murdering over 50 women between 1983 and 2002. So 19 years. Wow. He, right. He is known as Canada's most prolific serial killer as well okay wait and he was born in the 40s 1949 and he killed these people in the 80s into the 2000s yes (laughs) okay gramps yeah i know so um his parents were leonard and louise picked in again family of pig farmers drink for three generations. Um, he also had a younger brother named David, which we'll talk a little bit about, and an older sister named Linda. Now, Leonard and Louise um, didn't think that a pig farm was suitable for them to raise a daughter or a lady. So Linda went... <laughs> Sorry. So Linda, we're going to say that a lot. Linda went and actually lived with relatives. Mm-hmm. So she was never raised around David or Robert, never, you know, witnessed a lot of the stuff that they witnessed, you know, as children, because she was living with other relatives. And, you know, she was actually quite successful, too, you know, as an adult. So, you know, it came out whenever she heard about the story and what had happened to her brother. um, What like she knew her family, she knew how they were. And she was, like, quite surprised because her family, which we'll talk a little bit more about, they were millionaires with this business. Wow. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just, it's kind of a crazy dynamic, but she didn't really know her brothers, right? Well, do you know what she so, went on to do? I didn't really look into that. All it said was that she was successful and just, like, disconnected. Yeah. And, you know, you'll hear a little bit more about the disconnection as well. Um, you know, whenever the parents die. Okay. Wow. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I mean, they're going to die yeah. by the time of 2002. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so this farm was super, super successful, right? Um, now these people were trash. Like they are known to be, no, I'm not kidding. It's like if you fact. look them up. <laughs> It is. It's it's pretty disgusting, and we'll talk about that. But if you look up the Picton family, they, although they had a very successful business in farming, they were nasty, dirty people. I mean, how could you not be? I mean, I know a lot of farmers, and they're not nasty, dirty people. But pig so, farmers? 
I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, I already need a refill. I know, I'm almost there. So, just to give you an idea of how much money they had, in 1994, um, Willie, and so Robert goes by Willie, and you'll hear me say Willie quite often, but Willie and Dave sold, like, only four acres of the 16-acre farm for $5 million. Which Five is... $5 million in 1994. Yeah, wow. That's a lot of money. And, you know... They had a 16-acre farm of pig farming. <sighs> you done fucked up, Cadence. I did. Um, anyway, it's okay. Um, so, on this farm, you know, not only did they, like, breed the pigs, but they also... I'm going to have to take a second or I'm never going to get through this. Um, they're gonna, <laughs> Just count them. Just tally only, it. Just no, tally it. One... Two. Okay, the whole bottle. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not only did they breed the pigs, but they also, you know, had a slaughterhouse and they had a rendering plant <clears throat> where they grind up the pigs. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. So, had a rendering plant all on this 16 acre farm. Okay, this new camera, what is going on? Yeah, just take a second for it to adjust. There you go. There we go. Mm. Okay, let me just tell a quick story while you're catching up. Yeah. We have a butcher shop, like a legit butcher shop here, and I can't, I can barely stomach going in. One of the first oh. parts of, like, it's all animals, everything, but, like, they have yeah. whole pig heads. They have hooves and thighs and... I can't do it. Like, I yeah. can't stomach. And I eat it. Like, it's not yeah. that I, under I understand farming and how essential it is, but I cannot stomach. So, to be part of, like, this, what's it called, rendering? Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. I know. I, I can't imagine it either, and I can't stomach it either, but, you know, it just... Some people can do it. Other people can't. I guess yeah, that's why they're in the trash. Business. Yeah, Canadian trash. Yeah, that's why they are in the business. <laughs> so, anyway. So, you know, we're going to talk mostly about, you know, mom. But mom and dad were very dysfunctional, um, you know, in the kids' lives. As you can tell, they just, like, gave away their daughter. Yeah. But, um. Dad was abusive to the boys and to mom, Luis, um, mostly abusive to Willie um, as a young child. And, you know, although he would, like, beat him with a belt and, you know, do all these things, um, you know, physically abusive, he was really mentally and emotionally abusive to the whole family. And we'll talk about, like, a tragic story that happened to him as a kid. But also mom, Luis, it's noted that she had like this weird obsession with Willie. And some people say that they think that she was kind of in love with him, but never acted on it mm -hmm. in a way. So she would <clears throat> try to like overcompensate for things or treated him with like weird affection. And people would see that and notice that it was weird. But it's, it's apparent that Nothing, like, sexually ever happened between mom and Willie. But he had this weird, like, gravitational pull towards mom. Mommy's boys. Yep. Uh, he was a mommy's boy. Anyway, mom, you know, although she loved, you know, the kids, she was kind of a rough person all around, too. And, you know, when Luis and Leonard met, I mean, she wasn't a clean person. She didn't you know, bathe often either. Wait, so this is just kinda, a fact about her? Yes. So she kind of like just fit in with Leonard and the whole farming side of the business. And that's how they ended up raising their kids. So the kids would go to school with dirty clothes on every day because before school, they would work at the farm, and so they would shovel shit, they would slaughter pigs, they, <laughs> like, 
Oh I'm not God. kidding. At a young age, at a young age, they were working, you know, in this pig farm. Can you imagine, like, that's what you're known as? Like, some people, like, when you meet someone and it's like, yeah, he's kind of clingy or, yeah, he's a, this is X, Y, Z is his job. And it's like, uh, she doesn't bathe. Like, that's. Right. Yeah. And you know what's sad is Dave and Willie, like, they were bullied and they were known as the smelly kids at school. Mm -hmm. They were called stinky piggies <laughs> at school. <laughs> so, oh, my God. It's not yeah. funny. It's sad. I know. It is sad. And <laughs> and, you know... It's just, it's sad that those parents did that to the kids because they kind of created monsters in a way. And yeah. we'll talk a little bit about Dave, too, and how he's involved in all of this. But, you know, it, it, it's just a sad ordeal. So, ended up they ended up being just, like, nasty, all-around nasty people, right? Because never bathed. They were always stinky. They also had, like, an open-door policy with their house. But for the pigs. No. So, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, they did. So they would allow these pigs to just roam the 16 acres and their house and just come in and shit and piss and do whatever they wanted. So, like, it's not like you have a cute little house pet pig. Like, they would let these pigs just roam and shit and they would never clean it up. So I do have to interject with a story. Because it's oh, just, God. I cannot believe I haven't told you this. Oh, My no. Nana had a pet pig. Mm -hmm. Guess what its name was? Piggy. Willie. No, it wasn't. I'm no, it not wasn't. kidding. It was a black pig oh, named God. Willie. And we, I mean, we lived in a small town, but we didn't live like in a farm town. Like this was just like, we lived in a normal yeah. neighborhood. This pig a normal small town. roamed around until it yeah. got too fat. And then Willie oh, went away. My God. But Willie, I'm like, okay, anyways, so there's that. Okay, that, yeah, blown away by that. Um. All right, where was I at? Oh, Sorry. anyway, yeah, so, you know, kind of going back to you know him working at the farm and stuff as a kid so he'd work at the farm before school go to school right all stinky dirty come home work at the farm and this started at the age of like five four or five mm. like they were taught how to shovel <clears throat> stuff and what to do around the farm you know at a young age and so all the way up until you know he went to prison he this is all he knew was working at the farm Mom and dad would subject him to these things that kids probably shouldn't see at a young age. So working in the slaughterhouse or the rendering plant, I mean, he would see like pigs being slaughtered and, you know, their blood dripping from their body and, you know, all of these things that kids should not see. Yeah. So that goes to just kind of show the emotional disconnection between human life yeah well right and if so you've ever, not just human life life in general yeah if you've ever seen those documentaries with also how they slaughter pigs it is yeah tragic yeah it's really tragic so you know i i can't even imagine like seeing that as a child yet alone like seeing it as an adult yeah so um anyway when Willie was around 13 years old, he saved up his money because his parents would pay him, too. Like, he would work at the farm, and they would give so him, generous. like, a weekly allowance. <laughs> I know. Here you go, son. Yeah, I, you just saw, like, 15 pigs get slaughtered. Here's $5. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, so he saved up his money, and he wanted a baby calf as a pet, like a little baby cow oh. as a pet. I know. And this is like, it kind of talks about, you know, he was a soft hearted kid, you know, whenever he was a kid initially. Mm -hmm. And although he had seen all these traumatic events as a young child, he still had some good in him, right? And this kind of goes into the caring aspect of 
a Scorpio and them being emotional, but he saved up his allowance to buy a little baby calf. A um, couple days later, after getting this calf, you know, he gets home from school all excited to go and see the calf and to love on it and everything and doesn't see the calf in the field like where it's supposed to be. Goes inside, asks mom, like, mom, where's my calf? It didn't say the name from what I researched, but mom was like, oh, I think it's out in the barn. So goes out in the barn and dad had slaughtered it and it was hanging up from the ceiling of the barn, like sprawled out, blood dripping, gutted and everything. Like if you would see a deer, you know how they gut a deer? That is exactly what he saw at 13 years old. And that was your pet. That was his pet. Yeah. Oh my God, that's heartbreaking. I know. Oh. I know. So, you know, that just shows like the kind of messed up dynamic with his parents. It's evil. And the emotional and mental abuse. And so this is when he starts acting out as a kid and as a teenager. Like this is kind of his last straw. And he was also known whenever... He was like in distress or whenever he was pissed off at his parents or if something was happening, he would go and this is kind of irrelevant to the story, but he would crawl into a gutted carcass of a pig and like hide in the carcass (sighs) of the pig to get away and to disconnect. That's like that and movie like, um, that Leonardo DiCaprio finally got his first Oscar for. Did you see that? And he crawls yes, into the hide yeah. of the horse or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah to stay warm. Oh, my God. <gasps> yeah. And that's why and they called him a stinky piggy. Right. <laughs> but yeah. that's sad and it's also I know. disgusting. <laughs> it is sad and it's disgusting. I mean, so all in all, you can kind of see like the emotional trauma, you know, with Willie as a kid and all of that. However, he was somewhat, you know, caring as a kid as well. Like after this whole incident had happened, um, there was a neighbor girl down the road, like one of the neighbors and her name was Lisa and funny story. Lisa ended up having a baby with Dave, his younger brother. But anyway, we'll (sighs) talk a little bit more about that, but um, I know. Lisa and Willie were good friends, and again, like, Willie would not bathe. Like, he did not like water. He didn't care if he stunk. Like, he would not bathe. He wouldn't change his clothes. But Lisa was the only person that could get him to change his clothes and to take a shower or a bath. Yeah. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, we'll talk a little bit more about Lisa towards the end and, you know, her theory on everything, but... Um, like he would take Lisa as a kid, like bags of hot dogs or like food (laughs) that his mom had made, like just nice little things. Like you would think a little kid would do. I know. But anyway, he ends up being a serial killer. So, so, you know, he did have some good qualities in him as a kid and even as an adult, we'll talk a little bit of, you know, more about that. But, um, you know, after the calf incident, incident, he just kind of became unemotional. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is when he started getting into trouble. He ended up dropping out of school at the age of 16. So only three years after that. So you're like, what, a sophomore? Junior? Yeah. Sophomore or junior. Yeah, depending on the school. Um, so he dropped out of school and he went and worked for a local butcher. Hmm. And although, like, his parents, you know, would, you know, they had their own area. Anyway, he went and worked at a local butcher to be an apprentice butcher. And this is where he learned how to actually butcher animals. Okay, time out. 16-year-old kid. Butchers are essential, so don't get me wrong. I'm not shaming butchers here. They are. 16-year-old kid walks into your shop and says, hey, I want to be a butcher. Right. No. Mm -mm. No. At 16, you should be like, I want to be a football player or I want to be a a lawyer or a doctor or a 
I don't but, care. But, you know, the family was a well-known family. I mean, they had 16 acres of nothing but pig farming. And this is the third generation of pig farmers. And so that local butcher was like, hell yeah, you have experience. Come on in. God. You know, 16 Red or not, flags. like, I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, again, this is where he learns how to butcher animals. So, fast forward to October 1967. He's like 18 years old yeah. at this time. I'm so His glad brother... you're doing that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Because I'm like, His... uh... <laughs> Right. You're like, and how old are you? Right. Um, his brother Dave was 16 years old, just had his license, was driving home, and like this just kind of tells you how fucked up this family is, the story. But Dave had been like acting out as a teen as well, like drinking, smoking weed, you know, doing all the teen stuff. And he's driving home. Um, one night and he sees the neighbor kid, 14 year old kid walking down the street and purposefully revs up his engine and runs the kid over. Yep. Wow. Runs the kid over. Good. Yep. Runs the kid over, gets out of the truck, goes and looks at the kid, sees the kid is physically dying and doesn't help the kid, gets back in the truck, drives home to tell mom and dad what happened Dad takes Dave and the truck to a local mechanic to get the truck fixed. Mom drives out to the scene to find the poor kid struggling to stay alive. And she rolls his body in the ditch that's full of water. So the next morning... Oh my Somebody God. like drove by and called the police, you know, and it was on the news stating that this poor kid was left on the side of the road. They thought it was a hit and run, didn't know what had happened. And the local mechanic called the police and said, well, I just good for him. worked on the Picton's truck, you know, that night. And get this, Dave, the brother only got charged with failing to remain at the scene of an accident. This family was million. They were millionaires. They lived oh, like geez. very impoverished, but they had money for like the best attorneys. Absolutely possible. And this is why. Yeah. And this is why. So, um, Anyway, only got charged to, you know, for the, for failing to remain at the scene of the accident. Mom never got charged and the poor kid ended up dying at the hospital. Mm. And guess what he died of? Drowning. Drowning. And that he was a total guess. <laughs> in, yep. He drowned in two feet of muddy water. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's awful. It's I know. Absolutely awful. It's so sad. But, you know, like mom, instead of like, I get it, you know, mom is always going to protect her kids. But this tells you like something's wrong here. Like my kid is not right. This was not an accident. Dave was not remorseful at all. Like didn't even seem to be worried, apparently, from what I read. Yeah. And then mom just goes and covered it up, and she's the one who ended up killing him. If she would have just left it alone, right. the poor kid would have lived. My thing is, is, like, even if you wanted to cover up for your son, which I would throw any of my family members under the bus just as a... Yeah. Just as a full statement here, you kill someone and I find out I'm turning your ass in. But right. like she could have still have reported it and said it was like he got scared. He didn't know that he had hit the kid or something. He was in shock. Like right. or just report it to someone else and right. send in an anonymous call in. Like she did not care if that kid lived or died. No, she wanted the kid to die. Yeah. So, you know, this just goes to show, like, the weird dynamic that they had as a family. 
weird murderous dynamic. Yeah. I know murderous <laughs> dynamic where the kids it's learned it essentially. Off. Yeah, yeah, I know. So fast forward to what would this be? Eleven years later. In 1978, dad died. Um, he actually died at like the age of 90 some. So he was relatively old. And in his last few years of life, it was almost like they were just like fighting to keep him alive. Like he was so frail. He didn't move. It, it was kind of like a sad situation from yeah. what I read. Mm. The fast forward to the next year, 1979, mom, Luis, died. And... Willie was traumatic, like didn't know how he was going to move forward, like mm -hmm. completely had a, a weird like breakdown. And again, they always had that weird relationship. And wouldn't he have been in his 50s at this point, 40s? So 49, 59, 69, 79, so 30 years old. Oh, shit. 30 years old. Oh, shit. <laughs> but still. You're not doing I the mean, math, but I'm totally off. <laughs> Like a grown still, adult. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, he wasn't a, a child. Like, it's always going to be traumatic if a parent of yours die, but I don't know. Anyway. It, but it happens to so, everyone is the point. Right. It happens it to does. everyone. Everyone knows at some point or more than likely that their parents are going to go before they do. And it right. is traumatic, but sounds like they kind of knew it was coming. Right. So, they were older. Yeah. So when the parents died, you know, they left a will and the will basically said, um, this is the farm. We're going to split it between all three of the kids. They looped, looped Linda back in, mm. but Linda came back and said, I don't want any part of it. Good for her. She's like, I, yeah, she's like, I've moved on from this, whatever. So Willie and Dave decided to split the farm. However, part of the will said that Willie would run the farm, that he was always in control. And he was the older brother, so it kind of makes sense, you know. Um, so Dave always, from what I've read, um, he always kind of had a heart on for Willie because Willie was always in control. He's the one who's controlling the farm, controlling the money, type of thing and you know they end up like fighting a lot you know as adults too but you know that just kind of tells like their dynamic mm -hmm. like yeah they are brothers but they aren't really that close yeah hmm. so fast forward to like a year later uh willie and dave decide to use part of the 16 acres and one of the abandoned barns they decide to open up a non-profit bar called piggy's palace okay <laughs> i know <laughs> i need a refill wait i okay i've heard this story i've never heard this part a not how do you really have, well how do you have a non-for-profit bar okay i'm glad you asked because i knew they I had i knew that. they had like parties and a bar but no. i didn't know it was labeled a non <laughs> not for profit bar. What? I wanted, that's funny because that's hilarious. I want to oh, do I that. Know. I want to do that. Yeah. So a non profit bar. So basically, what he what they were doing is they were trying to do whatever they could to not have to get a liquor license, to not have to you know like go through the government, right? file everything you know legally. So they said, you know what, we're gonna open up this place and. Anyone is welcome to come. Donations only. There's going to be alcohol. There's going to be drugs. There's going to be prostitutes. You can house whatever event here you want. But it's free, just donation only. So it's so, basically like an alcohol church. Pretty much. Because, I mean, if it's if Canada's the same as the U.S., then mm -hmm. you don't pay taxes, right? That's the other thing right. for a non it wasn't, non profit. Yeah, it wasn't legally like a business. Right. And they end up getting shut down like what did it, what did it end up being? Like it's 1980, so like 12 years later they end up getting like shut down 12 because years. Yeah, and we'll talk about that because this family was so respected, you know, in this area. Like number 1, they're millionaires. Number 2, they are the main pig farming 
family right. that services, you know, the Vancouver area and all around, you know, British Columbia. So they are a well-respected family and essentially they just don't get in trouble. Wow. Yeah. So they open up this place called Piggy's Palace. <laughs> Which is hilarious. <laughs> if there's anything I, I like about these people, it's that name. It's Piggy's Palace. Anyway. Um, so again, it's on their farm in an abandoned barn. They kind of fixed it up and, um, you know, drugs were there whenever they wanted. Alcohol was there whenever they wanted. However, um, some respectable other people in the community, like other police officers, government officials, um, you know, other locals would host events or like birthday parties at this piggy's palace. Yeah. And yeah. knowing, like, they're very clear, like, drugs, alcohol, prostitutes. Well, I think it just depended on the audience, but those things were there depending on who was hosting what event, right? Got I'm it. Sure. Got it. Yeah. That it didn't sense. make it seem like the police or the government were involved in any of this, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Cater to your audience <laughs> kind of thing. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. So... Um, however, not only did they cater to like police and government officials and good people, they also catered and attracted different kinds of people like criminals. So shocking. They attracted a biker gang known as the Hells Angels. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, yes. but they're kind of a big damn deal. And um, so the Hells Angels apparently would often like that local chapter, like in Canada, they would often like party there. And, you know, of course, if you have a biker gang, not saying that all of them are like this, but you're going to have drugs, you're going to have alcohol, and you're going to have prostitutes. And just, that's black leather. Oh, you got to have the assless chaps. <laughs> and assless chaps. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> is, is it Hell's Angels that goes, like, they follow westboro baptist church and like hold up the signs that like block westboro or am i thinking of something else i don't know there's a biker gang that follows around and they actually do a lot of good um they follow around westboro i mean there's bikers against child abuse it's called baca yeah i want to say it was hmm. anyways I mean, we'll save that for our good, corrections good corner. ones yeah <laughs> <laughs> right we'll add that to the list yeah. um Anyway, so, you know, this is kind of where Willie is getting involved in, like, prostitutes and kind of developing his sex addi addiction because, you know, these groups of people, not just, you know, the Hell's Angels, but other groups of people are bringing, you know, prostitutes out. And mm -hmm. he's kind of seeing, like, what he can get away with. And he has a shit ton of fucking money. And he lives on a nasty-ass farm um, in a trailer so and why not? You know, doesn't really spend his money on anything, but now we're going to learn on prostitutes. So, um, you know, he ends up not only, you know, having this like event space and this bar, this nonprofit bar, but he also develops, you know, a new hobby of just collecting junk. So he would go out to like, auto auctions like car auctions mm -hmm. and he would buy just like piece of shit vehicles to just store on his property and if mm -hmm. you google like the picked in farm you'll see it's a huge farm and then like in the middle of it there's just a shit ton of so like, like a junkyard junk. like yeah it looks like a junkyard in the middle mm -hmm. And why, it's weird. Like, it doesn't really talk about why he did this or what that hobby was. But I think he just wanted, like, something to spend his money on, to be honest. And he's like, well, I'll just do this. <laughs> I'll collect garbage. <laughs> yep. He also opens up a meat business. So he's in the perfect, <laughs> he's in the perfect industry. And, you know, he's taking... Not only does he serve, you know, pigs for, you know, pork, but he takes some um, orders from locals regarding, like, what meat they want. So, 
I mean, some people would say they want to eat horses or llamas or chicken. Wait, uh, yeah, people eat weird. horse? Yeah. We went to Iceland and it's like a delicacy. And llamas? <laughs> I don't know about llamas, but I know people do eat horses. <laughs> mm, I know. It's sad. I never could, but yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So... He would take orders from like locals, right? Regarding like what meat they wanted. And he would go to these like meat or animal auctions. Mm -hmm. But he would buy the sickest animals. So he would buy the animals that had like sores on them, that were frail, that were dying, that might have like a missing hoof or something, yeah. right? Because they were the cheapest, and he would take them back, and he would slaughter them, and, you know, put them through the rendering plant or whatever, and this is where he determined, like, his methods of murdering, so we want to say, or how he liked to kill these animals, and, like, trigger warning, graphic, the rest of the story is going to be kind of graphic, so... um he determined that he liked to kill these animals by either slitting their throat or he would take like a nail gun that you use in construction yeah. and use it on their head until Aww. they died. I know. So it's sad. It's a really sad, you know, deal. He would then, um, and this kind of tells you how he learned what to do with like humans, but he would then after the animal would be killed, he would hang it up, he would cut it open, gut it, and let the blood drain. Yep. So, you know, this is where he learned what to do to the women, and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the future. Yikes. Yeah. Llamas? Um, Not the llamas. I know. Or the horses. I, like... I don't know. I love horses. I wish that I could have like a like a horse ranch, even though I know nothing about horses. But one day I want to have a lot of money and I want to have a horse ranch like out in Montana. And, you know, I just want to be a horse mother. <laughs> and I just want... Wild and free, bitch. Wild <laughs> yep. and free. Wild and free. <laughs> and that is what I want. So I just, I love horses. They, I feel like they just like communicate and connect with your soul. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. They're the real so MVPs. They are. They are the real, and it's kind of like dogs. Like they have like a good connection mm -hmm. with you. They say the I don't same know thing about elephants. Like when we went to Thailand, they say you yeah. can look in an elephant's eyes and it can see in your yeah. soul. And I'm like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's really, Which I believe really it. Deep. Yeah, no, it's sweet. Yeah, right? We had llamas. Um, <laughs> we didn't have llamas. Someone had llama. We had land, um, like, when I was mm -hmm. in high school. And the people that got to use our land had llamas yeah. and unfortunately abused them. And they, like, ate the trees and shit. But they were so cute. Aww. <laughs> and they did get taken that's away. So that's the I don't get, like, how people can abuse animals. I don't either. I've never understood and, that. you know... You know, it will say about Willie, I will say about Willie, the story never really said that he would, like, abuse these animals. Like, these animals, yeah, it's sick how he killed them, but he was killing them to butcher them. Well, and right? that's, yeah, I was going to so, say, as far as, like, slitting their throats, I'm pretty sure that's a very common practice in pig slaughter, is letting the is. blood drain in, like, it horrendous is. ways for whatever... Yep the yep. scientific reason is but like a nail yeah. gun a nail gun come on, come on. i know that's practice. i know i know so you know we're gonna fast forward we've been talking about like the 70s early 80s like 80 81 we're fast forwarding to like 19 well i guess we'll talk first about 79 victim number one here in a second but you know, we talked about him being a sex addict, and he was. And he was a sex addict, he was a pornography addict, like, all of it. Um, he would frequently visit, like, porn stores, 
like out near like trucker sites and stuff like that because prostitutes would be there. Um, but he would also go to the east side of Vancouver and they called it the low track area. And track like yeah, T R A like a race okay, yeah. 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 So they called it the low track area. It was downtown East Vancouver. Um, but this area was like very, very, very impoverished area. Kind of like I hate to say it, but like Prospect and Truce area in Kansas City, like just mm -hmm. a rough area. It's very impoverished. You know that there's gonna be gangs, you know that there's gonna be drugs, you know there's gonna be, you know, sex workers. That's what this area was. And he would frequently visit this area to pick up women. Now, the women that he was interested in were sex workers. All of the women that he said that he murdered were all sex workers. Okay. So, which didn't again, murder anybody easy else. target. Usually yeah. the same, like, comes from a bad family. No one has the money to look into it. Everyone right. thought back in those days she had it coming. Like, just awful. Right. It's terrible. Yeah. It, it's sad, but, you know, that's just the time of how yeah. things were. Um, so these areas were kind of noticing that when Willie would visit, you know, the women would leave with him. But the women would never come back to work again. Some people in the late 70s and early 80s, like other sex workers, would call the authorities or call the police and say, like, we think Willie Pickton could be kidnapping these women or doing something to these women because we don't ever see him again. And because they were sex workers, the police didn't give two shits and didn't even, like, follow through to even go and look at his place or go talk to his place until later in the 90s. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Right. So, victim number one, her name was Wendy Louise Allen. And the only reason why we know it's victim number one is because Robert Pickton told the authorities this um victim number one yeah oh. wendy louise allen she disappeared from you know that low track area um on march 30th 1979 okay victim number two fast forward to three and a half years later in 1983 rebecca rebecca juno disappeared so between his first kill and his second kill, it was three and a half years. Right. And, you know, if we talk about, like, you're going to hear us talk about serial killers and kind of, like, their motive. I mean, the high of that first kill kind of stays with them yeah. for a long time before they need that high again. Yeah. And so that's why there's such a gap. So then we go into victim number three, Yvonne Marlene Abagosis, crazy name, but um, she was murdered on New Year's Eve, 1984. So the gap got smaller. So from June, 1983 to New Year's Eve, 1984. Yeah. I mean, that's a year and a half later. So from three and a half years to a year and a half later. Exactly. So that tells you the progression of how quickly he was able to kill these women. Yeah. And again, he said that he murdered more than 50 women. So it could have actually have been more, right? Well, he said he lost count. Jeez. So yeah. we see it as three and a half years, one and a half year, whatever. But it, it kind of, it could have been more. It could have been more. Um, but again, you know, victim one, two, and three, he told the authorities this. That's true. Like, he said, like, this was my first kill, this was my second kill, this was my third kill, and then after, you know, my fifth or my sixth, I kind of just lost oh, count because gotcha. there were so gotcha, many. Gotcha. Yep. So, 1984, Yvonne Marlene Abigosis. There was another woman, right, that he kidnapped well didn't kidnap we'll get into the motive here in a minute mm -hmm. but there was another woman that went to the authorities in 1984 okay so third victim 1984 okay. this woman 1984 
said she went to the police and told the police that Willie Picton hired her to be a prostitute to perform sex acts, got violent, tried to kill her, she ran off, and this is in 1984, the cops did absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So this is, you know, at least person number two that is called the police, letting them know I about Willie Picton. I don't understand not looking into these things. I will never but, understand that. But because his family was who they were and because mm. he was who he was, and yeah. he's holding, you know, these events at the Piggy Palace and police are, ob you know, obviously out there. Like, they're like, there's no way. Yeah. These sex workers, these drug addicts, they're making it up. Yeah. Wow. Mm hmm That's so sad. I know. And, you know, he... He didn't, like, hate all women. He didn't want all women to die. He just absolutely loved and hated sex workers at the same time. Yeah, I was going to say, because he was addicted to yeah. what they he had to loved, offer. Right, like, he loved the gratification of it, but he thought that they were literally, like, the scum of the earth. <sighs> Which is sad. It's so sad. It's so yeah. sad. So it goes to like, I don't know, it goes to talk about, you know, him being caring. Um, he had a lot of women friends <laughs> as an adult, had a lot of women friends. And these women, you know, some of them lived with him, which we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But most of these women would be coming from like an abusive household. Um, they're separating from that abuse. They need money for groceries for them and their kids. They need housing. And Willie had all this money, and he was a caring, giving person. And he would just give these women that were friends with him, you know, money. Like, would never ask yeah. for anything in return. And, um, you know, he just said, you know, I have all of this money. I'm going to give back, you know, to the people that need it. And it's almost as like, uh, I don't want to... <laughs> downgrade Catholicism because my family is Catholic, but it's almost like doing Hail Marys, right? It's almost like, you know, repenting your sins in a way, if you are yeah. a Christian. This is his way of repenting his sins with killing these women. It ties back He's into giving that, back it, to other women. It's that weird Scorpio trait. It is. Of it's like they do for the bad people that are close to, to you. Yeah. And, yeah. and seeing everyone else as like almost like non human. Right. And being able to easily disconnect. I just can't. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So unfortunate. I know. So, um, you know, one of his good friends that, that was a woman, her name is Tanya Carr. Um, she was actually keeping her horse at Willie's place because he had a 16 acre farm and, you know, she couldn't afford to feed the horse anymore. So Willie was like, bring her on over, you know, I'll feed the horse. I'll take, I'll take care mm -hmm. of her. Um, ends up separating from her boyfriend because he was abusive and asked if he could, if she could move in with, uh, Willie and lived with him in his trailer. Now, this trailer that he lived in was absolutely filthy. I mean, you heard how he grew up as a kid. He never broke those habits Which is as an crazy. adult. Don't, doesn't he have millions? He does. And people just knew him as a smelly pig farmer. Yep. I mean... Mm -hmm. Yikes. So Tanya Carr, you know, moves in and... She's, like, describing this place as, you know, filthy, and he lives in a trailer on the property. He could have built a beautiful home, but lives in a trailer. Um, his bed ends up just being absolutely nasty, and apparently she tells, you know, journalists in the future that it was, like, moldy and just, like, gross. A moldy bed? Yeah. Ooh. Like, somehow water had gotten on it, and it molded, and he just never got a new bed. Apparently. Gross. So 
She lived in this trailer with him and actually lived with him for about two years. Um, and they shared a bed. Like they would, she would go to work. She worked at a local restaurant. He worked at the pig farm, you know, all day. And they would both come home. She would help him on the farm throughout the day. Um, both come back and they would just go to bed and they were friends. Like he would never be handsy with her. He was never inappropriate with her. They were just truly friends. And so throughout this, these two to three years that, um, I know my dog is such a brat. Anyway, <laughs> I swear like dogs are like toddlers. Yeah. Sometimes it's unbelievable. But throughout the two to three years, you know, that not only she worked on the farm, but lived with him, he didn't kill one woman. Hmm. So he stopped his killing spree. And it's almost like he just like needed that relationship yeah. or that gratification of attention and affection because he didn't really get that as a child in a healthy way. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So... Yeah, it's like, it's weird because Tanya, there's like interviews from her that say, you know, he was a giving person. He was a nice man. She never suspected anything. She did say that he, he was somewhat like creepy and kind of weird, but she never suspected him being a serial killer. Yeah, and a lot of that's probably comes with the territory of being a canadian pig farmer <laughs> like a lot like yeah you know i don't know yeah nothing against mm -hmm. nothing against mm -hmm. pig farmers but but i mean you kind of know what to do so fast forward to whenever she kind of moved on and you know they stayed friends but she wasn't living there anymore 1995 he ended up killing four women um i want to talk about like his motive because it was always the same he would pick up sex workers uh, who were mostly drug addicts, you know, in this uh, downtown east side of Vancouver. He would have them perform sex acts on him. So whether they had sex or whatever, um, and then he would kill them. This was the same. He would do the same exact thing every single time. Jesus. And before we move into... The next victim. We're actually going to save the next victim for part two. Surprise. Because, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Because this is where we talk about, you know, we talked about his motive. But this is where we talk about exactly what he does and how he uses his pig farming for his benefit. Last drink yep. of the night. Okay, guys. So... For us, we're going to keep recording. We're going to take a quick break. But for you, yep. you've got to wait till next week to hear the rest of this episode. You do. I'm honestly so excited because I'm half a bottle of wine in. So I know. But I'm also know, about right? to pee my pants. So Agreed. <laughs> All right. Um, you know what to do. Yep. Like, subscribe, follow, share. We are live on all podcast platforms. And go check out our sponsor. What, what was their Instagram yes. again? Yes, it's at, so the at symbol, and then color up, so C-O-L-O-R, up, CBD. Yep. And then, of course, Sinister 20 for 20% 20 off your order. Um, and their website is colorupco.com. Woohoo! All right, guys. Well, I am so excited. So I know this I know story already, too. but there are so many bits and pieces, like so many details that I don't know. So if that's yeah. how it is already, I can't wait to hear the rest of it. Oh my gosh, I know. In this episode, really quick too, let's thank our yeah. patrons. Because yes. I do think we have a couple new ones. I could be wrong on that. Um, as of right now, I think we have six. Um, yes. So Nick, Valerie, Angie, Cheryl, Haley. And Annette and Adrian. Annette and Adrian. Yep. So thank you guys so, we have so seven. much. We really honestly do have um, exclusive content coming out. So yes. stay tuned. That should be out within like yes. the next week. So yes. you guys are going to love that content. It's really funny. You really will. It's really funny. It's so entertaining. And you just get like a deeper dive into 
who we both are. <laughs> yes. And it's, just some of the great. shenanigans. So you'll really get to meet yeah. us and uh, be yes. a part of the friendship. So, it, oh my it'll God, be I know it's going to be great. It's going to be great. All right. Well, we will see you guys in the next episode. Peace out. Stay sinister.